assignment since the days of the Apollo program. And in the starring role, the first woman to pilot a shuttle. CNN's John Holloman joins us now with details. John? Bobby, there are a lot of firsts on this mission. Going to be a big night for the six astronauts aboard Discovery. They have started getting aboard about an hour ago. They're all preparing to leave the Earth at 1222 Eastern Time. We can show you the live picture coming from the Kennedy Space Center. All the astronauts now aboard, those are technicians about to close and seal the hatch. The shuttle has been fueled for this history-making mission, which East Coast U.S. residents will probably be able to see live as it happens. The shuttle will fly almost directly up the East Coast of the U.S. in order to get as close as possible to the Russian Mir space station. The crew has been training for more than a year for this and is ready to go. The Discovery crew arrived at the Kennedy Space Center ready to make history. The mission will give the world its first chance to see close-up pictures of Russia's Mir space station. Discovery will fly to within 30 feet of the Russian spaceship in advance of a planned docking in June. We will be able to look eyeball to eyeball to the crew member inside in the Mir, I'm sure. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting uh, from the pure beauty of it. That rendezvous will happen four days after launch. And while it will grab the headlines, it will also be the first spacewalk by an African-American. I hope that uh, youngsters and oldsters, uh, particularly the minorities that see me do this, uh, will see this as a sort of a signal that if he can do that, that I can do that. A sort of a symbol of uh, achievement, an achievement of anything that you can do once you set your mind to it. Every other shuttle has had two Mayo military pilots at the controls. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Eileen Collins makes history as the first female to pilot a U.S. spaceship. There is quite a bit of interest out in the public in having a woman fly the space shuttle. And as the first, I would say that I do feel a little more pressure than I think I would feel otherwise. Because there are people outside of NASA who are watching me and hoping that I do well. And I want to do well because I know that I'm representing other women in this country, other pilots, uh, military pilots, as well as civilian pilots, who are hoping to come here to NASA someday and be pilots themselves for the space shuttle. The astronauts will do some of the usual. They'll launch a 2,800-pound free-flying observatory. After two days, the spacewalking astronauts, Bernard Harris and Mike Bowe, will carry it around by hand. Astronauts building the space station will need to move big pieces of hardware like this around, and this spacewalk is a test of whether they'll be able to do it. The weather has been described as almost perfect for the launch coming up in two hours. Unlike most missions, this one has to run like clockwork for the launch window itself because there's only five minutes when the Russian Mir is close enough to the launch pad uh, to make a fuel-efficient rendezvous. We will, of course, be here with live coverage from CNN's John Zarella at the launch pad. Astronaut Andy Allen will be with us for the astronaut's perspective on this history-making mission as well. Again, the launch schedule for 22 minutes past midnight Eastern Time about two hours from now. And, Lyndon, we will, uh, we will be expecting great things from this crew of astronauts, including their, uh, their spectacular liftoff, which I'm told will be visible up and down the east coast of the United States. Indeed we will, John. Thanks very much. Just imagine the picture. Can I want emergency Can you get someone over here now to three two five Gretna Green? He's back. Tonight on Newsnight, more bruising evidence in the O.J. Simpson trial, this time in his and Nicole's own words. Countdown to rendezvous, liftoff for Discovery is just minutes away. This night, the astronauts are suited up, the space shuttle is gassed up, and the countdown clock is ticking toward liftoff, now just minutes away. Well, the first woman to pilot a NASA space shuttle is strapped into Discovery's cockpit and ready to blast off. Lieutenant Colonel Eileen Collins and five other astronauts boarded the shuttle more than three hours ago, waiting for the moment. It's now just minutes away. CNN's John Holloman is here with details on the mission, which should be an exciting one. John, meeting with, with the Mir station. That's right, Catherine. That's just the beginning of this. They've got a lot of things going on, not very much time to accomplish all of them. The countdown clock in its final minutes, and for the crew of Space Shuttle Discovery, the anticipation of a history-making flight is all over the place. In the cockpit, as you point out, astronaut Eileen Collins, seated at the controls. The first time the shuttle pilot has been a woman. It's her first flight. And she says when she started training as a pilot, she never expected to be where she is tonight. I knew that being an astronaut was not an option for me because it was a job for men. 
but I had it in the back of my mind somewhere, and the flying thing started taking root when I was younger. And my initial goal was to obviously be a pilot. When it opened to the military, I said, that's what I want to do. I want to be a military pilot. So I think that was my primary goal coming out of college. And in 1978, NASA selected their first six women as mission specialists. And that's when being an astronaut became a reality for me. I also graduated from college in 1978. And at that point, I tried to work my career so I would be in jobs that would help train me to be a better astronaut someday. I became a T-38 instructor pilot, my first job in the Air Force. I flew C-141s as an aircraft commander and an instructor pilot. And I got a master's degree and I taught at the Air Force Academy in the math department. And I thought that the things that I did in my Air Force career were, are very valuable. That experience is very valuable to NASA. And it turned out I was right because I think that every, every one of those jobs has, uh, has contributed, contributed significantly to my experience that I can in turn contribute better to NASA. The job of shuttle pilot may not be what you expect. CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center with an astronaut who has piloted two shuttle missions. John, looks like a picture-perfect countdown so far tonight. It certainly is, and a picture-perfect night for, uh, this would be the 10th nighttime launch of a space shuttle, and again, beautiful clear skies here at the uh, landing sites overseas in case there were an emergency. Also, picture-perfect weather. All systems are apparently go. And in just a minute or so, they ought to be a couple minutes, that'll be coming out of the uh, nine-minute hold. And as you said, with me is astronaut Andy Allen, and Andy uh, piloted uh, two space shuttles. Uh, the, the first time you went up, what, what's the feeling that must be going through Eileen's mind right now? Well, I, I think what you really feel right at this point is, is you're, you're coping with yourself and you're, and you're kind of stressed a little bit because what you're trying to do is discipline yourself and to, and to not let your emotions get too carried away with what's going on. You certainly have the extremes of a, an excitement and thrilling ride that you're about to go on, a wonderful adventure and a tremendous opportunity to do something that uh, few folks get a chance to do. At the same time, uh, you're apprehensive, you're a little scared, you want to make sure everything goes right, you hope everything goes right, and above all, you want to make sure you don't make any mistakes yourself. And, and right up until now, things are fairly quiet for that hour and a half, two hours that you're, you're just sitting in there strapped in, but once they pick up the count, things start to move pretty quickly for the pilot, don't they? You bet. Uh, right now, Eileen, uh, in this case, would be looking around more than likely, and she'll be uh, checking a few hundred switches she's got to, to look at and uh, that are going to be under her cognizance uh, during the ascent. She'll look at some displays, and she'll also probably read a couple procedures there that she's getting ready to uh, proceed. Coming out of the nine-minute hold, it's uh, a really, really busy time for the pilot and commander. And you were telling me there's probably some things that nobody bothered to tell her yet that she's going to have to find out on her own, little initiations that may go on. Uh, you bet, you bet. Uh, some of the things that we just try to hold uh, to ourselves a little bit and let someone experience for the first time, you're, you're pretty well gouged out by the time you get to go, but we like to have a couple little surprises, like when you come off the external tank, uh, the cannon sounds, the howitzers, it almost feels like the external tank is hitting the orbiter. Everybody else just kind of lays back and watches the pilot react to it. Well, we're going to stay right here with you, Andy, and uh, we'll watch this launch uh, together, and uh, all systems, again, are go and they should be coming out of the hold uh, momentarily. John? All right, John Zarella, thanks a lot. About nine minutes from, uh, from the launch of the shuttle, and we'll be here with John Zarella and Andy Allen to watch it. Launch scheduled for 22 minutes past midnight Eastern time, as I said. About, uh, about 10 minutes from right now, we'll be back to provide you live coverage of the whole thing. abbreviated edition of Newsnight. Stay with us. CNN's John Holloman is standing by with live coverage of the launch.